I'm gonna net this fish, guys, because he was that hard to catch. This is the fifth dock I've been to this morning. When I didn't start at 10 o'clock, I say this morning, it's 11 now. This is the fifth dock I've been to that's had fish on it. You see, I still don't have a live scope. Well, I can move it once in a while as it rocks. I can see if it's fish there. That's about all I can do. Let's quit flopping. He's about 10 inches. All right. And uh, I tried a few different baits, so I thought, I'm going to try this color. This color is called Candy, right? And it's a uh, it's an azure body, which is a neon blue. And it's got firecracker flake in it, which is red, blue, and silver. Uh, it's called firecracker. So I think the only bait I put that color in. It comes like that, red, blue, and silver. Anyway, just trying to find some fish in between the storm. Y'all can see it's cloudy. Storm's right on the edge of us. We're going to get it here in a little bit. I thought maybe I can get out and catch a couple, make a video before it comes, because once it starts raining, I don't know if we're going to be able to fish. I'm going to be able to fish the way it looks. Maybe not till Monday or Tuesday. And I need a video for Wednesday, so I thought I better get out here and see if I can make one today. Bam. All right, guys. I switched colors to get a hit. What I've done, that when, the, when you catch a few fish and they quit on you, or you can't get something going... I know this is a nasty day. We're in between. I took my sunglasses off so I could tie my hook. I retied my jig too. I've been hitting the dock too many times and I thought I'd better retie that. Um, but when you're having, having trouble getting them to hit you, sometimes switch a couple colors. So, I, and I went to a Tweety Bird. Flash color. Oh, that's a good crappy. All right. Look at the flash color. It's in the Tweety Bird. All right. Bam. Well, I figured they, these didn't look, look very big. I'll pick him up. Oh, he's decent. He's not a baby, but he's he's probably nine and a half-ish. He ain't as big as the last one. Yeah, he's probably nine. That's, that's well, shame on you. Guys, I went to pitch him back, and by the time I pitched him, he flopped on my hand. I bet that didn't feel good on his old noggin. Oh, this one hit me close to the boat, guys. Yeah, he's decent. He's a little bit bigger than the last one. Like I said, I'm fishing an underwater tree here. It's been here for years. You know how I found this tree? I fished it before I used to have live scope, guys. So I've been live scope for six or seven years. I come in here one time bass fishing, just the, running the bank, pitching at the docks or anything. I see some guys sitting here, and I see them catch crappy. I'm like, he's about nine. He's, I said, what, what in the world are they catching those crappy? And they stay here for a long time. So I came back another time, I was fishing this cove. I fished this cove a lot for bass. And like I say, I was seeing somebody else sitting there. And I seen them catch a couple bass. And, and I knew they was fishing minnows where they were set up. I seen some floats and stuff. So I tried to come back one time nobody was here. I tried to figure it out. And I kept getting hung up and kept looking. And I figured out it was a tree in the water. And uh, I started catching some fish off of it. Well, what helps me with the live scope is now I can see the fish. And see that they're there. And uh, Sam gave me a pointer yesterday. I have to tell you, Sam is better with electron, a lot better with electronics than I am. <laughs> I've been doing the flip button and the, what's the HR, AHS off, hip flip, try that, it goes straight up and down. Right now you can't see my bottom because my bottom's still going down like this. But he said try to try to pitch. So I did, I started playing with the pitch, Sam, I started playing with that. And you can still see my bottom right here, it's going straight up. But I got it angled enough where at least I can see the, there's some fish there. <laughs> You know, if you can see this, so if you look under a dock and you can see there's some fish, that's all I need to know if they're under that dock. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you something. I did notice the last fish I caught was under that dock right there. I just moved straight out here. After I caught that fish, I seen a school of shad come through. I could see the ball, you know. And the shad, uh, the crappy rolled up and got after him. Took off out through there, I think, because I tried to move my hand a little bit. You see it? See the bottom still, still crazy. See here? And I done that, and I can see the shad going that way, and the crappy right behind them. <laughs> so they left me. So I had to move. But yeah, my depth finder screwed up. And some of y'all have made comments for different things. Try this, try that. I've tried different things, and Samson been trying to adjust the pitch. I did. I still can't get it right. It still won't level out on the bottom. It won't get it right. But I can, like I say, I've got it 
better now where at least I can look under there and see something or whatever. And I might have to adjust it to each stock or each spot of stop. <laughs> but at least I've got it where I can see, use it a little bit. It's a software. This is what I've been told. I think I've mentioned this in another video. I called the lake, local uh, Garmin man that's, that I bought this death finder from. And he keeps up with it because he sells a lot of them, a lot of units and stuff. And he says it's a software glitch. And they know about it and they're trying to make a fix for it. And he said the fix is supposed to come out tomorrow. He told me to be looking for it. He said, then download that that update. He said, if that update don't help you, then call me back. Because I had this hat one time and it was my transducer. And I had a 32. And I went and bought this 34 from him. That's been, we talked about it. I think it's been three years. So transducers do go bad. I don't know if some of y'all, have y'all ever had a transducer go bad and it's quit on you like that and you had to buy a new one on LiveScope? Are you having this issue? Somebody else told me they're having the same issue and they was telling me something else to try. So that's what he said. A lot of y'all having this issue. Now these are not getting any bigger. These are not getting any bigger. All right, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head back in toward my home and I'm going to stop at uh, another dock or two. He's about, he's small, actually smaller. I'll be, he's about eight and three quarters. Uh, and see if I can come up with a bigger fish. The, uh, it might just be the weather. Like I said, it might just be the way the weather is. I try to wash my hands, guys. My on and off button is white now. <laughs> For fish slime. I have stopped cleaning the camera. It'd get really bad if I don't wash my hands once in a while. But uh, what I'm, the only thing I'm doing today is just fishing with different different bait shapes, uh, small baits. This is a Stinger Junior. Now there's limit supplies of these. There might be some of this color left. This is killer. I'm not sure. But when they're gone, they're gone. Somebody asked me about that the other day. Somebody asked me about a color in the Stinger. I said, no, I'm not really making it anymore. You know, that, uh, the BA Stingers is replacing them. If y'all lock, I got a lot of dual, if you lock, if you look, I think, I think I said lock. If you look, there's a lot of dual colors in them and a lot of things. And that's what I'm doing because here's the thing. The dual colors seem to sell better than the, in, the, in the single colors, in this one color. But I'm telling you, Virginia Shad and Flash, you see me catch fish. The other one was uh, uh, Virginia Shad. The first one was Flash. Those two colors just work. We have a light stain to the water. We've got about two foot visibility right now. And with more rain coming, after this rain, it's probably going to be worse. But those baits work. Virginia Shad will work. Seem like in clear water to the little stain. Flash does too, because it looks like a minnow. Okay, um, it's might, it might be some of those colors left. I know it's some sunshine color, which the chartreuse left, left, and you can't go wrong with chartreuse, right? But I'm putting uh, the BA stinger is mostly dual color, and once I get rid of these uh, stingers and stuff, I'm gonna delete a bunch of them and the stinger juniors. I might add a couple more colors to the BA, at least two or three more, and one of them probably will be Virginia Shad. That's one of the best all-around colors I got. It's not the best-selling color, no, but I can tell you what right now, once y'all use it, you're going to like it. So one of the things I've done this week, one of the rainy days, is I made up a bunch of stuff in Flash and Virginia Shad, swim baits, prey baits, and different stuff. So as you order now, the next couple of weeks, that's what you're going to get. I sent uh, two orders out yesterday, and they had prey baits in them. Yep, sent, I put a prey bait in them. Virginia Shad and Flash, one of, one of, the, one of the other ones, Virginia Shad and Flash. And I added uh, the little uh, two-inch uh, uh, shiner and Tadpole Junior, things like that, and those solid colors. Because I think once you get it in your hand and, and look at it, you'll go like, wow, that looks real. And once you fish it, try it. That's why I send those packs out when you order, guys, with different stuff in it. Stuff that you didn't order. Give, give that stuff a try. I've been sending out ocean last this last couple weeks. I've been sending out the ocean color in the crickets, tadpole juniors, and tweety birds. And that's what I do when I give you a little bag of odd and end free stuff to, for you to try. I've been sending some willow tails out. I sell a lot of willow tails, guys, but they all go to two states. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to tell you where they're going to because them guys might get mad at me. But most of my willow tails go to two states. What do they know that nobody else knows? Right? They're, they're catching fish on them, and I don't mean to buy in one bag. Uh, I had an order the other week. I think it was 12 or 15 bags of just willow tails. They know they're catching fish on them, guys. So 
There you go. I know uh, here at one of our uh, bait shops uh, on, up on Curl Lake that the highest weight that's ever been weighed in was on my baits and was on the willow tail. That's right. So in, in a tournament. That was in a tournament. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to close it right here. Bam. All right, guys. Today, what I'm going to make a video about, my video is going to be about, if I can say this, is um, I fished Thursday before the storm. Now, this is Saturday morning. Y'all know that Helen, Helen came through. He's about nine inches. That was the first cast. That very first cast, first place I stopped. Now, what's the difference? Let me put my spot lock on. Thursday, I went to four docks that had fish. I could see the fish, even though my live scope screwed up. <laughs> you can see my bottom's still going up, guys. But if I move it around enough, I can see there's some spots back there, right? That's all I'm doing. And I, then I fish it. If I don't see any crap, I go on. I'm still using it just to see if there's something there. And uh, I didn't catch a fish. And I sat down and thought about it when I got back home. And I fished 10 or 12 docks. And I covered a lot of the lake. I covered about five miles of the lake. And I finally found a spot that I caught two or three fish off of. And I probably caught 10. I caught quite a few small ones. I did, first one I caught was a nice one. Now it's after the storm. How is the fishing difference pre-storm? And the storm came in. This was Thursday. The storm came in um, Friday. Actually, that actually about three or four o'clock Thursday evening. I was in the shop working, and it started drizzling rain and raining. Then we started getting some of the bands off of it. Then it's the pressure. We all know the changes. Everybody, I hear people say, "Oh, the fishing's great before a storm." You know, uh, I've caught him. I've caught him bass fishing during storms. You know, when I fish in tournaments, we had to go right. And stuff like that but is it better before the storm or after we're going to find out today that was the first cast with the fathead minna in chartreuse color all right all right guys already i'm doing better than i did thursday i done caught two off the same dock i did catch two i think off of a down tree and i did catch two off of one dock one of the latter places i fished and i was way on down the lake from here um uh, He's a small one. He's probably eight inches, eight and a half. This is the hot perch color. And guys, I'm switching colors and switching bait shapes. Just, just for the video, I've done, done that Thursday too. Uh, sometimes you find a color works best. I can tell you Thursday, the best color was Flash. Flash in the Tweety Bird was the best color Thursday. Let's see what happens today. Sometimes you can find a better color that tends to get more bites. Okay? Don't be afraid to switch colors and body shapes. Sometimes it makes a huge difference. Uh, I've seen times that we're just going to a fathead minnow, and I could use a, maybe two or three different colors. I made a video on fathead minnows, and they would hit that fathead minnow that day, and I threw a couple other baits that morning, caught one here, one there. When I went to the fatheads, I started catching more fish. So sometimes that's that, it's just that body shape that makes a difference, what they want. They had something less action, something bigger, something more minnow profile. All right, guys. All right, he's a little bit bigger. He's probably right at 10 inches. Probably nine and three quarter. So this school the fish here is not many here. Uh, I try to show y'all, but I don't have a death finder. Y'all see my bottom stuff. And and Sam told me said something, and he's right. I I, ha I messed that. Well, you can adjust the bottom. I've been trying that. I see, it's a couple right there. You can see it ain't many. Just kind of scattered. Here's a couple right here. That's right there. I don't have my spot lock on. But anyway. Uh, sometimes there's more on this dock. I have seen, last time I was here, I made a video here uh, about two weeks ago. I bet it was, gosh, I bet it was a hundred here. Yeah, they were scattered from one end to the other. But they're moving a lot. Don't, don't expect that. He's not a bad one. He's not a monster. All right, curly tail grub, blue boy. Yep, this is the hot tail grub, blue boy. Two inch grub, okay. Got a curly tail. Yep. Uh, thought I would try that. So that's again, like I said, try different body shapes, whatever. Already, I'm doing better than I did Thursday. Thursday, I struggled to catch fish, guys. Like I said, I've covered a lot of ground. This is the first place I stopped now. I done caught three, and I've had other bites. I've had other ones pulling on me. I feel them hitting it. Can't really see them, watch them with this Death Finder the way it is now. And so I knew so, cause some of y'all made comments on the Death Finder. Uh, I talked to the local Garmin dealer again uh, yesterday because he told me that the, the, uh, there's a new fix coming, an update that's going to fix this. It's supposed to be out Friday, 
I watched for it Friday. So finally Friday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, I called him. And I said, have you seen the update? Yeah, he said, no. He said, it hadn't come out yet. It ain't very big. There's just no big fish here, I don't think, guys. But I'm, I must keep fishing because I'm catching them. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm catching fish. I don't care what size they are. Somebody said that in a comment the other day on the site. They said, uh, I said, I'm catching some small and they said they're fish. <laughs> That's right. He is small. He's probably seven inches, maybe seven and a half. Also, that's the future right there. If you ain't catching little ones, guys, what are you going to do the next couple of years? Because there's got to be some small ones there. I watch some of these guys in, in the videos. They catch a lot of good fish. I mean, monster fish, even this time of year. And uh, y'all notice that once in a while I catch a good one. Well, I call a good one 13, 14 inches. But I haven't caught maybe one over 15 inches since June. I've caught some 14s, which is a good fish. But here in the summertime, until we get into the to that water cools, we're at 76 degrees, 75, 49, yeah. Uh, until that water gets down to about 70, 68, 70, the bigger fish will pull shallow again. I just didn't want to come out of there. All right, guys, went looking for bigger fish. Like I said, most of them were, I was catching them small, and that was fun to catch some of them. But this one's a little bit bigger, yeah. I just went down the lake a little further. Uh, maybe half a mile and i'm still on the on the creek channel staying on the channel i get asked that a lot where am i finding my fish oh yeah he's about 10 and a half there you go this is the stinger junior and the color is called limeade yeah limeade uh might be some left y'all have to go in there and look i'm selling now the stinger juniors and the stingers i just i still got some in my tackle box once they're all gone on the site i'll I'll uh, get rid of these too. I might just send them out on the winners on uh, Wednesday night when you win something. I think I sent some out this week to somebody. I just had some stingers in the drawer there where I've been fishing with at home, and I just pulled them out and sent them some of those. Bam! Facing the wind now, guys. A little breeze got picked up, so I just it's coming and going. You know how it is after a storm where you get a little breeze sometimes, and then quit now. I'll just turn the boat around and get on the back of it when it does that. I can cast better off the front, though. I can get what, position the boat to right. Bam. There you go. That's on the Menace color. And I have those in quite a few baits. This is in the Fluke, guys. Don't sell many Flukes. Used to sell a bunch of them. They kind of, people kind of quit on them. It's got a nice tail. Look here. It's segmented, so it moves easy. I cut a touch off of it. You see where I cut a touch off of it? Squared it up a little bit. Yeah, it's two inches long. I just cut it. I just cut about an eighth, uh, uh, an eighth inch maybe off the nose, because it comes to a point. Don't be afraid to change the shape of your bait, look length of it. Uh, somebody else commented a couple weeks ago. They love the fluke. I got a couple people buy them, and I see that's what they do. They say, "Oh, I just cut the touch off the nose, and then it, then it's smaller." Yeah, you can make it the size you want it, because uh, it's long and slender. Bam. All right, guys, I can tell you all right now, as y'all noticed, getting a little bit bigger. The, the fishing is much easier today. I'm having no trouble catching fish. I, I don't three or four off this dock. It's been a couple minutes. I had somebody, a neighbor that I know, stop and talk to me a minute. He had a really nice bass. He wanted to show me, and I weighed it. He didn't have a scale. He wanted to weigh him. It was a nice bass. There you go. This is a willow tail. He's 10 inches. Um... Right now, I can't think of the name. I think it's called Sickle. Yeah, it's a flash with a blue tail. I have this, of course, in the Tadpole Junior. It's in the tail colors. In the tail colors, there are six colors, and all of them have a tail color, either chartreuse, blue, okay? Uh, check it out. Do y'all want to check them out? I sell a lot of them. I sell a lot of the uh, ones I used earlier, Hot Perch, uh, and the uh, 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 Plum Crazy color. So you, you can check them. They, I sell a lot of those in the willow tail. Willow tail is a, is a good bait. Y'all don't see me fish with it much. It doesn't skip good under a dock. It's great for open water. It's great bait when the water's cold, like in January and February. All right. Uh, I know a lot of people use it then. And like I said the other night in uh, Wednesday night's video, I mail a lot of these out to two different states. And I'm not going to tell you where they are because the guys might get mad at me. I might be giving up a secret. But anyway... 
Uh, there's a couple states that I send more of these to than anywhere. And I think it's because they're vertical jigging them, long poling them. That's my thought. All right. There you go. Appreciate y'all guys. Rather fish after the storm than I would before the storm. I went out that morning and I was very disappointed. I thought, hey, I got a little time. Storm's coming. Can't paint. I got a house. I'm getting to start painting, guys, in between jobs. I didn't have anything lined up for that day. And I, it was awful. I struggled to catch fish, okay? I, like I told you, I think I fished 10 docks. Today, I have fished two docks. Two docks <laughs> and caught plenty of fish. So there you go. That's the difference. Uh, check out Lake Country Beach if you haven't been there. All right? As y'all can see by the water color, the storm didn't do much damage to us. Maybe a little color. We got about five to six inches of rain. That was it. Got a little bit of wind, not much. We was on the edge of it all the time. Sometimes it was just drizzling. And if you go toward, to, I'm in, I'm in uh, South Hill, Abrasive, South Hill area, guys, Gaston. If you go to Coeur Lake and go up the lake to about Danville, Virginia, from there through the mountains, the mountains of Virginia got it bad. A lot of, a lot of roads washed out. Uh, Y'all know North Carolina mountains got it bad, Tennessee mountains. That's what, that's who done all the damage. The damage was done, guys. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next time fishing lake country.